Crash fumigation method is first to establish the size of the silo and ensure that you're putting the right dose rate in. The correct dose rate is 1.5 grams per cubic metre. Now, because a lot of silos are not stated in cubic metre capacity, we also offer on the label a rate per tonne of silo capacity. That is two tablets, uh, that's in the, uh, the solid formulation, two tablets per tonne of silo capacity. That means the whole silo, each time you fumigate, whether the silo's got 10 tonnes in or 100 tonnes in, the dose rate is the same. You are fumigating the airspace, not the grain that's in the silo. Uh, a full face mask is required with an appropriate uh, gas cartridge on it. Put on the mask and carry the tablets to the top of the silo or the bag chains to the top of the silo. Bag chains are a much safer technique to use because the powder that is left after the tablets have disintegrated and lost their phosphine remains toxic. Most important that you do not breathe that into your system. That contains one or two percent phosphine which was released in the presence of moisture which can be in your lungs and most important that you do not breathe that in so if you have if you use the bag chain system the bags can be removed from the silo and buried at the inappropriate uh, disposal point if you're using a tablet in tray form you put the tablets on a tray in the headspace of the silo not up the auger up the auger is an illegal practice now it's been removed from the label and so it must be going in a tray on the headspace or the bag chains in the headspace of the silo. The normal air currents that operate within a silo will carry the gas to the lower parts of the silo. It will usually take 36 to 48 hours to reach lethal concentrations at the bottom of a silo. But there are systems that are now becoming available on the market where the tablets or the bag chains are applied at ground level. The gas placed in the base of the silo is carried into the headspace by a thermosiphon pipe which runs up the side of the silo. The sun acting on the thermosiphon pipe causes the air in the silo to rise and pulls the gas from the phosphine reaction chamber at the base into the headspace of the silo and continues that circulation effect. The silo should remain locked down for as long as the phosphine concentrations uh, remain above the standard required. The standard required in Western Australia is 100 ppm for seven days. Now that means that the gas needs time to reach 100 ppm at the base of the silo. So this can mean seven days plus a couple of days for the gas to reach the bottom of the silo. With a thermosiphon system that is a little bit quicker and the gas will reach lethal concentrations one day earlier. Ventilation requires another two days. Uh, with the top open. If you have an aeration system, you can turn the aerators on and blow the gas out of the top of the silo on a 24 hour basis to allow gas to move out of the grain and into the, into the interstitial spaces and then be blown out of the silo. Yeah, the withholding period is two days before it can be fed to stock or used for human consumption.